All right, what's up? Back again. So we're going to take a look now at the trade deadline talk for the Mavericks. Things have gotten a little bit quiet, but one thing we know, the Mavericks are very good at being tight-lipped and not showing their hand. I don't doubt that the Mavericks are exploring different options. What I do doubt is that they want to move too many of their pieces because they understand this team right now is situated just fine for what we expected this team to be. This isn't a team that's going to contend for a title right now. And if you look at the window for some of these other teams around the league, you know, if in four or five years you got KP at 28 and Luka at 20, you know, 24, 25 at that point, 24, I guess, 28 and 24 respectively, you've got them in their prime. You've got them right smack dab in their prime. You've got guys like LeBron aged out of the league, probably 40 or he's basically certainly out of his elite, elite, elite status. You've got Harden and Westbrook's window with the Rockets pretty much shut. Who knows if Westbrook's even there at that point. Um, you got a lot of, a lot of things opening up. Now I'm not going to act like, Hey, nothing else is going to happen between now and then. So the Mavericks are going to suddenly be the favorite at that point. I mean, they certainly could be, but it's just something to consider when you look at that picture is, this is not a team built right now that it has to go get it right now. This is a team built for the future, and this is about the development and the growth in the meantime. That's what the Mavericks look at this team as. So that's why you look at it and you say, okay, well, they're not going to get hung up necessarily on going after a major free agent, or uh, not free agent, a major trade, a blockbuster trade. Although we've speculated that they might through much of the season, they've kind of maintained their hand of not really looking that much in that direction. For the longest time, they were tied to the Memphis Grizzlies and Andre Iguodala. That's finally put to rest as Iguodala heads to Miami now as part of a deal there. Uh, Memphis gets a first round pick for him, gets Justice Winslow as well. I mean, that's a pretty good haul for Memphis, considering Iguodala didn't want to be there anyway, and he's 35 years old. Miami gives a two-year deal, two-year $30 million deal then um, to Iguodala. Now, the second year is a team option, so that keeps things a little bit more flexible for their cap, which is a little strained. And now Miami's trying to go get uh, Danilo, uh, Danilo uh, Gallinari from OKC as well, and... Man, if they could pull that off, that would be really nice. I don't know that it makes them favorites by any means in the East, but it would be a really nice get. And they would probably try and offload something like Dion Waiters and, um, ooh, if OKC could get Hero, that would be huge for them. But that would be interesting to see for sure. It sounds like what's more likely to happen, though, is that they're going to try and Take If they do a deal with OKC, OKC already owns a Miami pick, but it's top 14 protected, so they could then upgrade that pick where they remove that restriction, or OKC could ship that pick back to Miami as part of the deal and then get a better pick in that regard. So I don't know what's happening there. This isn't an OKC show anyway. I'm just giving a picture of certain parts and how it related to the Iguodala thing. So with that in the with that in consideration with Iguodala off the table for the Mavericks now which I didn't think he was a likely part for the Mavericks this whole time anyway he would have been veteran leadership but he would have been a rental and an expensive rental at that that I don't think would be worth compromising your core for so with that consideration uh you look at other guards you look at other wings around the league because the Mavericks aren't going to take a look at this point Collie Stein say what you want about his impact early on with the Mavericks but they're not looking to do anything different um, with the forward position, forward or center position, I don't think. So even though I was a fan for a while of the idea of, hey, Dwayne Dedman, I don't see I don't see it happening. I think what you're going to see them take a look at is something, you know, Alec Burks, we wanted them as well. We wanted him as well. Uh, he got shipped for multiple second round picks to Philadelphia this morning. So that's off the table now as well. That would have been another solid addition there. The Knicks are trying to get involved, and D'Angelo Russell doesn't really impact us at all. But by the way, after Knicks had to fire the president of basketball operations, that just seems like complete acknowledgement of the disaster of how they've run things. And hey, that involves the KP trade. Uh, I don't see anything coming down right this minute. I've been keeping track of all these main, um, you know, main follows like Woj and Shams and Mark Stein and all that, but nothing new has come down yet this morning. 
beyond what I've already reiterated. I think for the Mavericks, if they do look to do something, it's going to be a middle of the road kind of solidify uh, move. It's not going to be anything major. I would be very open to the idea of moving Courtney Lee, obviously Courtney Lee, Justin Jackson. And I'm going to say it. I think that Warriors second round pick, that's probably pick 31 in the draft. I use it. It, this is this upcoming draft is being widely touted as a very meh draft outside of the top five or six picks anyway. So what value do you think is going to be there at pick 31 for Dallas? If that's the case, then the perception of it being a high second round pick, you should take advantage of that and pair that with an expiring contract like Courtney Lee, a player who you don't even really use in most cases and a young, still-on-a-rookie contract, Justin Jackson, who's shown little flashes here and there, but certainly looks like he is a bit player, uh, a role player in this case, at best for his ceiling. Certainly not a guy that can be touted or counted on as like a perennial starter, perennial quality starter. So, Rick Carlisle told Brad Townsend after the game, I quote, I don't think anything is going to happen with us but I don't know for sure. Again, I said earlier the Mavericks are notoriously tight-lipped about any kind of trade activity or anything like that. And that works out. That's how the KP trade comes out of seemingly nowhere last year because they don't tell anyone anything. In fact, Mark Cuban has in the past basically threatened if anyone leaks to Woj, they're fired. Like, the Mavericks don't play that game. I don't know what they're going to look to do. I'm not the least bit questioning that they are going to be on the phone and making a lot of calls today just to kick the tires and just to see what's out there. But it sounds like a lot of the things that we were hoping they would do are not going to be uh, relevant. I was actually interested in a potential Jay Crowder reunion. He was with the Grizzlies last night, but held out of the game. And it seemed to become uh, more clear that even though Memphis had said they were looking for a first rounder for him, I didn't think we were going to give that up, obviously. But I, I was interested to see if Dallas was making some kind of move in that regard because I, I would be interested in that reunion. The thing is, for a first rounder, no, I'm not interested. Jay Crowder is a 33 and a you know 33 and change uh, percent three point shooter for his career. He has had a year where he shot like 39, almost 40 percent, but for the most part, his career is in the mid to low 30s in that regard. But he is a a veteran, a leader. And a guy who can play some nice defense as well. He's had a very up and down, um, you know, performance throughout the year. His last game with De- uh, against Detroit, he was very underwhelming. Five and five, I think, was his stat line. But before that, he had a solid showing as well. Obviously, a lot of people probably had their ears perk up at the mention of him recently because he was involved in that little scramble, scrum, whatever, in New York, where he stole the inbound pass down. 10 points or whatever, and then went to go shoot a corner three and just got outright shoved by, oh man, who was it that shoved him? I can't remember who it even was that shoved him, but that whole scrum, and then you get after the game, um, Morris making the kind of sexist remarks in the post game show and all that, and no place for that at all. But regardless, that's how Jay Crowder's name most recently came up. I would be interested in that, but not for that price. Uh, certainly not for that price. I think he would fill that role that the Mavericks right now are asking Jackson to pick up. I think he would fill that role great. He's been very up and down in his career. We drafted him uh, very eh. Then he was part of the deal to the Celtics that got us Rondo. Eh. He was great for Boston for a while. Then he went to Cleveland where he went back to eh. Then he was in Utah, where he was pretty nice. And then he got traded to Memphis, where he's been, you know, up and down. But I don't know. For a, for a guy that ideally would be a low-cost thing, great. For a first-round pick, no. That, that's my take on that. So I don't know what the Mavericks are going to look to do. I don't doubt that they're trying to make something happen at this stage. And I just don't think it's going to be anything significant. I think they understand that, you know, this team is built more for the future anyway. And, you know, with things that have been happening this year, whether it's injuries or whatever, you can't really you can't really put all your eggs in this basket right now. It would be silly to do that. So with that being the case, we'll see what ends up happening. I'll keep you guys active, um, actively in the know as as I find out about it. 
and uh, we'll see from there. But I think more than likely the team we have right now is a team we're going to have for the remainder of the year, unless we make some small tweaks around the edges. So that's going to do it for my time, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, and remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute. Peace. As Law Nation would say, I'm out.